So when I put this list together, as we kind of were talking through, um, and I told you, it's not, it's, it's not a, 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 um, a speech that I put together or a book that I'm writing. You asked a concept about leadership, and I kind of jotted down a few things that I thought were important to quality leadership. And I'm glad you asked me to do that because it really kind of helped me be a little bit more concise about things I need to continue to stay focused on as well, because sometimes we can lose our way in a busy world, right? So I don't know that they're prioritized, uh, but I put them down probably in relevance as what may be important to me for the very moment. So you, you talked about the first one I put on the list is to have a high fear of failure. Um, that's a dicey comment, and I, I say that simply because fear of failure can work in, in two opposing paths for some people. Uh, for some, and for the most, by the way, it can push people in a corner and they can shy away from risk-taking and from opportunities. It's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about having a healthy degree of paranoia, so to speak. For instance, when we started our company, um, the general conception in the marketplace was is that my brother and I were two country bankers from a family-owned bank that didn't need to be even started in a bank. Uh, we weren't qualified. There was no chance we were going to succeed. Uh, we had no business doing what we were doing, and they probably were right. I mean, we were young and inexperienced, and, and but what we did have was a very high fear of failure. And what that meant for us is that we charged the hill a bit harder than the people who were just comfortable in, in their life. So, for instance, the very first day we were going to open, my brother and I called everybody we had banked, and we were we felt like we were really good bankers for quite a long time. The very first day we opened up for business was in the back part of this parking lot. We were in a double wide mobile banking unit. We opened up 125 accounts the very first day of business. Oh, wow. A typical bank would do, a typical bank branch would do 30 in a month if you were lucky. We did 125 the very first day. People were lined up at seven o'clock, shoulder to shoulder from the very back of this parking lot to the very front of this road up here waiting to open an account. The very next day we opened up 120. So we opened up over 240 accounts in the very first two days. That was a couple reasons for that. One, people liked us and they wanted to support us. But two, and more importantly, my brother and I had a very high fear of failure and, and we were pretty aggressive about saying, we need your support, will you be here for us? And another good example would be during the recession. I mean, there were a lot of banks that didn't make it through, and fortunately we did, but we, we got our share of dents through that process. We had some coastal presence. It was a challenging period of time for us. Um, it was a period of time that you really just couldn't call on a lot of people to help you solve the problems because nobody knew what all the problems were. Uh, but when most people were putting their heads down to go to sleep at night, I was still up trying to figure out what am I missing? Where are all the landmines? Where are all the bombs coming from? And how do I navigate through this process? Failure wasn't an option for us. So, you know, we were, I was at a point of, 20 hours a day, 18, 20 hours a day working and navigating and, and minding my way through this process of trying to survive. So, so having a, a, a high, healthy dose of paranoia and a high fear of failure that allows you to charge instead of retreat, I think is important for any leader. It allows you to take risk as well. And also, it, 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 you should always remember that failure isn't an option you're gonna fail, right? <laughs> But having a high sense of failure with, with the high desire to win, uh, doesn't, uh, failure doesn't um, make you feel like you've lost the war, just the battle. So you lose the battle, you figure out what went wrong, and then you mm -hmm. attack the war and you win the war ultimately. Right. Uh, so it, it, it seems like you, at, at that point, with the high fear of failures, you are really becoming resilient and, and, and develop the kind of perseverance, you know, perseverance strong enough, is a good word. really strong enough to, to keep you forward, to keep, Absolutely. You, keep moving forward instead of, you know, like, instead of like, for example, on the first day you, you, you mentioned about, about, about 20 years ago, you, you mentioned that you made about, you and your brother made about 125 accounts on the first day. Right. Without fearing anything, it's just like no fear, just to go, just go and. There was no, it was no chance that no we were going to be normal. Yeah, no. I mean, we wanted to make sure we could show the world we were going to win at this. So basically you led that by example. And so I guess how, how, how can you instill that into your cultures that enable people to well, look, you know, we can, when we go through the list of talking about other qualities of what leaders do, uh, leading by example is important. So when, when people see you, that their leader is not afraid to take risk, but also can manage the risk and know how to take calculated risk and, and, and measure the outcomes of that risk, 
then you will find that there will be other people like that that want to be on that team and, and, and capable of doing the same things, maybe even at a higher level than the leader is.